Hi guys, today we're talking about atomic physics and in this problem it says an alpha particle with a charge of plus 2e with an initial kinetic energy of 5.1 MeV is fired at a stationary fixed nucleus with a charge of plus 80e. Assume the initial distance between the nucleus and the alpha particle is very large and then determine the distance of a closest approach to the nucleus the alpha particle will achieve. Alright, so what this problem is asking is if this alpha particle is shot in with an initial kinetic energy of 5.1 MeV, how close can it get before it's shot back? Okay, And the reason why it's going to be shot back is because, if you noticed, uh, these are both positively charged particles. And as we know, positive charges, uh, they don't like each other. Okay, They tend to not want to be around each other, so they are going to repel. And that's what these little uh, green lines right here are kind of indicating. They just don't want to be around each other. So, uh, against the alpha particle's will, it's being shot in, okay? And uh, what's going to happen is there's going to be a potential energy that builds, okay? And that potential energy is going to be a repelling force because these guys, like I said, they just they don't like to hang out, all right? And so what happens is initially you're going to have a very, very large kinetic energy, okay? And as it's going down range, uh, your potential energy is going to increase, okay? And uh, just to kind of give you like a little demonstration or some intuition of what's going on here, Imagine you had a baseball, and so you have this baseball, and you want to throw it straight up, right? Well, the second it leaves your hand, the kinetic energy is going to be very high, right? And uh, as it goes up, 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 the kinetic energy, it starts decreasing till finally, when the baseball reaches its final altitude, the kinetic energy is finally going to be zero, okay? For a brief moment in time, it's going to be zero. And at that moment, the potential energy, and this is, you know, gravitational potential energy, is going to be at its max. So the same kind of thing is going on here. Initially, the kinetic energy is very high. It's going to get close to this nucleus. It's going to get very close. Ultimately, before the initial kinetic energy, uh, you know, reaches zero. Okay, so so you've got kind of an equilibrium going on here and uh, this all boils down to the conservation of energy and uh, if you want to take a look at the equation um, it's going to be your initial kinetic energy plus your initial potential energy is going to equal your final kinetic energy plus uh, your final potential energy, okay? And uh, as we know, at this point, and at this point, this is the distance. This is going to be r, uh, as we note right here. This is going to be r. So this is the radius, and that's going to be from the center of this nucleus uh, to the center of the alpha particle when the alpha particle is right here, okay? Um, that at that moment in time your potential energy is going to be at its max state and it's going to be so high and by this point the kinetic energy has dropped to zero so your kinetic energy is going to equal zero at this point and then it's going to be shot back here and when that happens you know uh, your kinetic energy is going to start rising and your potential energy is going to go down okay so we've got this equation and we know that the kinetic energy, its initial is 5.1 MeV, all right, so we'll just put this 5.1 MeV plus the initial potential energy, and um, as this problem states, it says assume the initial distance between the nucleus and the alpha particle is very large, meaning it practically has no potential energy, so for that you can just put zero, all right, it's going to equal your kinetic energy final, and as I showed here, uh, your kinetic energy final is going to be zero, okay? Um, just like uh, the baseball, when it reaches its final altitude, 
for a brief moment in time, that kinetic energy is going to be zero. And so that's going to be zero, and you're going to be left with uh, your potential, I'm sorry, your potential energy final. And we are looking for this moment right here. Um, and it's actually going to equal 5.1 MeV. So you can rewrite that to say 5.1 MeV is going to equal our potential energy. All right? And I've got an equation here uh, for potential energy. And it's going to be K, which is Coulomb's constant, times Q1. And that's going to be the charge of the alpha particle, which is 2E. And E is just the charge of an electron, which is 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, all right? Times Q2, which is going to be uh, 80E. And uh, we need to find the radius, okay? Well, the first thing you need to do is we need to make sure our units are correct. So what unit is this potential energy in? Well, you may already know that it's going to be in joules. Uh, but just to show you, uh, that it is in joules, uh, K, which is Coulomb's constant, uh, that's going to be in Newton times meter squared divided by Coulomb squared. And as we know, uh, Q1 and Q2, that's just going to be C squared because all you're doing is taking your 2 times your E, the charge from an electron, and that is in Coulombs, and so that's going to be C squared, all right? And then R, which is your radius, that's obviously going to be in meters. Okay, and when you do that, you can see that what you're left with is Newton meters, which is equal to joules. Okay, so our problem is that our kinetic energy is not in joules, it's in electron volts. Well, there's this little handy equation I like to use. And uh, if you don't have this, you definitely should have it um, because it makes converting between electron volts and joules very easy. All right? And basically, uh, it's just joules divided by the charge of an electron is going to equal electron volts. Okay? And uh, that's just like a really handy equation to have. So we need to convert this MeV, or mega electron volts, into joules. Um, and that's what our P is going to be in. So as you notice, you just take the charge of an electron times the electron volt, and you equal joules. So that's what we do. So we take 5.1 MeV. So we take 5.1 times 10 to the 6 uh, electron volts times the charge of an electron, which is 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And we're going to be left with 8.1702 times 10 to the negative 13. All right. So that's going to be uh, 8.1702 times 10 to the negative 13. All right, and now that is in joules. So that's for our kinetic energy. So we know that is going to equal this equation, K times Q1 times Q2 divided by R. So we can rewrite that all right, to say R is going to equal... K, which is Coulomb's constant, 8.99 times 10 to the 9th, times our Q1, which is going to be 2 times the charge of an electron, times Q2, which is going to be 80 times the charge of an electron. Okay. And that's all going to be divided by this number right here. Because uh, all we did was we took this R, we threw it up here, and we took this guy, and we put him down here. All right? So we put 8.1072 times 10 to the negative 13th joules. 
right? And that is going to give us uh, our radius. And so when we do that, the calculator, so I got k, 8.99 times 10 to the 9th, times our 2e, so 2 times the charge of an electron times 80 times the charge of an electron. And we divided that by our kinetic energy, because now it's in uh, joules. And we are left with 4.5. 2 uh, to the negative 14th, or we can say 45, if we do that, it turns it to the negative 15th, and we're left with 45.2 femtometers. Alright, so R is going to equal 45.2 uh, femtometers, and that is just really really close. I mean that's just a very very small distance. But anyhow, that's your answer and that's how you solve that kind of problem. I hope it helped.